So what's the difference between this switch that you can get for 25 bucks on Amazon and this switch that's a little bit bigger and a little bit more expensive? I'll tell you the difference. And it's not just how many ports there are. This switch is capable of VLANs, it's managed, it has SNMP capabilities, it has QoS capabilities. This is a, what I would consider, real switch, even though it's 13 years old. Uh, it's, it's a piece of crap, I'll be honest. It's gigabit, it's non-PoE, it's not the greatest in the world. But it does have the option for redundant power supplies, okay? Or a redundant power supply connection. You can take these two screws out, pop this cover off, slide the RPS module in there and connect it to your redundant power supply uh, shelf and you're good to go. You have redundant power supplies. Okay, so you can't take something like this and replace it with something like this if you're doing any type of trunking or have any type of VLAN set up. This is not capable of, of handling that type of traffic. It will not pass it, it will not work. The closest thing that this switch can do to the 2824 or any real networking switch is I did notice that this one says it has jumbo frame support. So I don't know if it would just have the MTU set to 9,000 on, on all ports already or if it's somehow sensing the, the higher uh, MTU and, and, and changing that. I don't know how it's doing it. It says it can do jumbo frames. How well it does that, I have no idea. I've never tried it before. It does say that it's plug and play. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, and it's an energy savings green net. 70% uh, less power consumption. That's, that's kind of cool. And uh, I did notice one more thing on the back. The switching capacity is a, it says 10 gig switching capacity. Okay, slightly misleading because, you know, 10 gig is sort of a, a buzzword right now in, in 2017, going on 2018. Uh, it, it's, I think people might be a little confused if they're on Amazon or if they're on, you know, the web. Uh, looking for something like this and they see 10 gig switching fabric or 10 gig switching capacity They'll think oh wow, that's a 10 gig switch. Yay. Now my new, you know $5,000 iMac Pro can can plug into my network at 10 gig speeds and that's simply not the case These are still 1 gig uh, Interfaces on these on these five ports here. So a little uh, you know a little misleading because anyone that's you know using something like this is really not going to care about the 10 gig switching uh, capacity of this switch more than likely I shouldn't say never but more than likely they're not going to care um, so anyway this is not capable of doing a lot of things that other managed switches can do um, there are some switches that uh, have a web interface and they have an IP address and you can do things like uh, you know go to the web interface and configure the switch or whatever but they don't have any type of QoS, VLAN, SNMP there's there's no manageability of those switches at all and so just because something like this might have an IP address or you know have something where there's a little web interface that lets you you know configure your switch sort of like a modem or something like that does not mean that it's capable of supporting uh, all of the protocols and all the services that you need it to okay so um, I'm actually gonna switch I pulled up the 2800 series spec sheet the technical specifications from HP on the 2800 series and um, by the way like I said this switch debuted in 2004 it is beyond uh, old and, and needs to be retired at this point and it's not even in service anymore but uh, anyway let's take a look real quick and let's see I believe I got yeah cool so here we go the 
2824, which is the switch that I just uh, showed you, says 48 gig backplane up to 35.7 Mpps. That's million packets per second. Okay, so 35.7 million packets per second. Uh, four dual personality ports, and that is talking about these ports right here. Um, th these two are considered one port, these two are considered a port, and these two are considered a port, and these two are considered a port. So basically, you have your option to choose whether you want to connect that port via Ethernet or with fiber. And if you want to go fiber, you simply take off these little covers, and a little slot is behind these covers, and you slide in the uh, fiber transceiver, and you're good to go with a gigabit fiber connection. So I actually have a picture of the gigabit fiber transceiver right here. And so this is what, uh, what you could slide into those ports that I just showed you on the switch. And it would allow you to plug in you know, your, uh, your fiber cable and, and use that. All right. So um, when I talk about VLANs, and I don't really like this diagram, but it's kind of like it's kind of the best thing that I could find. I, I, I browse for a little while looking for something, and I guess really to get what I want, I'm probably going to have to just sit down and draw it. But uh, when we talk about VLANs, and you've probably you know heard me talk about VLANs a lot in my PFSense videos. And uh, I go into detail about you know VLANs and the different interfaces and you know blah blah blah, and uh, so this is kind of like the best you know diagram that I could really see of maybe why you would want different VLANs and 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 what's going on. So you can see that these are on different subnets. Okay, each you know th this computer is on a management network and this computer is on a computer network and this phone is on the VoIP network and the, the camera here is on the camera network. And uh, you know, you, you do want to keep this type of traffic separated, okay? You would not want um, management computers and phones and cameras all on one network, all on one flat, untagged network. That would be, you know, pretty devastating uh, for multiple reasons, uh, performance, security, and that's just to name a couple. So what you do is you can actually take switches like the 2800 series or any managed switch that can handle VLANs. Um, what you do is you actually start uh, separating the, the ports into different groups or into different VLANs. And the great, great thing about VLANs uh, is that uh, you can have multiple VLANs on the same port. So just because you have one port with one cable connected to that port doesn't mean that only one subnet is able to communicate on that wire. You could actually have five different networks, 10 different VLANs traveling on one physical cable. Okay, so you could have a lot of different subnets and they're not able to talk to each other unless they're routed in the appropriate way, but you could have a lot of different subnets and a lot of different VLANs traveling on the same media. And that is fantastic when you start talking about um, how many devices may need to be uh, added, let's say in an office. Let's use this diagram here as, a, as an example. Let's say I have uh, one cable coming into my office because that's the way they wired the building when it was built, which is a huge, huge no-no to only run one data cable. Um, anyway, we won't go down that. Uh, but let's say you have your office and you've got a computer, you've got a VoIP phone, and your boss is a complete a-hole and he decided I'm gonna put a camera in your office and spy on you all day. All right, so you have those three different devices and they're supposed to be on three different networks. So what do you do? You've only got one cable coming into an outlet or a, a, a jack on your, in your wall and you need to connect three different subnets to that, okay? What you can do is actually go up the chain and you can create VLANs and you can tag them and you can have that single piece of copper coming into your office 
uh, you can have that single piece of copper actually running as many different networks on that as you want. And so then what you would do is connect a, uh, another switch to that wire, uh, that single piece, of, uh, single piece of copper, and you could actually break that out into the different segments. That's one way of doing it. You could get a, a small eight port managed switch. HP makes uh, a few and I'm sure others do as well. Uh, they make a small eight port switch for that reason if you're going to need just a few ports to connect a few devices that are in one location and uh, that would be one way of doing it or that would be one reason to use VLANs uh, the other reason to use VLANs is to separate traffic uh, and keep the subnets apart and like I said you don't really want all of your VoIP traffic uh, being treated with the same QoS as web traffic or camera traffic and you know letting someone that's you know saturating the network because they're downloading torrents all the time you don't really want that interfering with your uh, with your VoIP traffic so you can separate the networks you can apply QoS and you can say VoIP traffic really needs to be treated with number one priority and everything else can fall in line after that. Okay, so I actually have this 2824 configured with an IP address and I'm not gonna go into how to take a HP switch out of the box and configure it with its initial you know, uh, password and the, the console uh, or the serial cable and make the connection that would be a you know huge huge video in and of itself so I'm gonna sort of skip ahead of that and start with a switch that has a IP address and IP address assigned to it and it has telnet enabled these things are so old that my Mac I'm not gonna try to figure out how to SSH into this switch um, because I can enable SSH on this switch, but then uh, Mac OS, you know, Sierra is, is complaining about the, the algorithms that are being used and they can't agree on which one to use, blah, blah, blah. So Telnet's a lot easier for this little demonstration here. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and um, power the 2824 that I just showed you. I'm going to plug it into the network and I know the IP address that it has and I'll tell that into it and show you how I do that so real quickly here I'm just going behind my computer and we're gonna plug it in to power and this thing has some uh, has some usage on it so the fans are a little bit on the loud side, but I don't think it's going to be much of a problem. I don't think it's going to interfere too much with the microphone. Uh, so we will go ahead and let's make sure I got it switched back over. There we go. So we will go ahead and pull up the terminal here. Okay. Uh, make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see. All right, that should be plenty big. So I know the IP address, and I don't think the switch is booted up completely yet, but I know the IP address, so we can go ahead and start pinging it, so we'll see right when it comes back online. It actually is online already, cool. Okay, so since I've already enabled Telnet on this interface, I should just be able to, right from the terminal in Mac OS, I should be able to just run the command Telnet and then the IP address, and I should be able to get right in. And there we go, there's the switch basically telling me that, uh, you know, the, uh, the government is uh, you know subjecting me to all kinds of restrictions and whatever whatever so push any key to continue and when it says any key that really means you can push any key on the keyboard that you want okay there is no any key on the keyboard 
I know you already had to know that. All right, so you can see here's the host name, HP2024 test switch. And uh, we'll go into menu. And if we go into switch configuration here and drop into the VLAN menu, then you can see that we have different uh, VLAN names that we can assign, okay? And so what we'll do is we've got the default uh, VLAN that all HP switches come with and we can't change that I don't think let me try to delete that switch or yeah the default VLAN cannot be deleted I didn't think we could do that so anyway we've got default and which is which is VLAN 1 and we've got a staff VLAN using VLAN ID number 2 okay and that's actually what I'm uh, connected through right now. So I, if I were to delete the staff VLAN, um, then I would lose connection to the switch. So obviously we don't want to do that. But anyway, if we say uh, that we want a management VLAN on VLAN 75, we would come in here and we would say add and we would make the VLAN ID 75 and then we would call it MGMT and then we would save okay so now I have VLAN 75 is my management VLAN so then I can hit back and now I want to go to VLAN port assignment and I actually want to start assigning ports that are part of the management VLAN and so you can see here if I go to edit then port one on the switch right now is just untagged default. And so we would change that to no, and we would say management untagged. All right. And so I don't think this video needs to get into tagged versus untagged because sort of like the switch setup, that would be a video in and of itself. Um, but I guess very quickly if you maybe have a little bit of the concept and you're just maybe not exactly sure um, I can give maybe like a, a 15 to 30 second uh, explanation of what's going on here so if you have an untagged network uh, let's say I save this configuration like I've got it right now management is untagged so I'll save that all right so if I have a computer and I plug its network interface into port one of this switch that we're configuring right now, then as far as that computer is concerned, it is on the management network, okay? It's just, it doesn't even know about VLAN number 75. It doesn't know that it's called management. It's just on a network, on the network, okay? So, whatever is on VLAN 75 will be available to that computer because it's on the management network. If we don't want that to happen, if we say actually port one needs to have the traffic tagged for management, then what we can do uh, let's see, one good example here is let's save that what we can do is actually say uh, in system preferences we'll add new VLAN and we can call this management VLAN and we'll make it 75 and we'll keep the interface the Ethernet wired interface okay so create and now you can see that I've got the management VLAN created and if there were a uh, DHCP server running on VLAN 75 which there's not on this network that VLAN doesn't actually exist but uh, that's how I would say um, that's how I would get this computer connected to VLAN 75 if that's what I had to do to, to stay connected now if I come back here and say edit go back to port one and I make it untagged 
then save then if my computer is connected to port 1 and now that that port is untagged on port 75 I don't have to do anything this computer when I plug the cable in is just automatically going to be connected to that subnet and if there's a DHCP ser uh, server running it'll automatically get an IP address okay so that is a quick rundown of tagged versus untagged and the, the really cool thing is you can have multiple ports um, or multiple tagged VLANs running on the same port and um, it, it's pretty pretty cool so that is how on an HP switch you come in to the menu and you assign a new VLAN and you assign that VLAN to certain ports so if you go back here uh, I can say that I want both tagged I want both staff and management to be tagged on port 2 okay and you can go here and do untag this and tag that the sky's the limit and the more VLANs you add the the more you'll see you'll actually have to start scrolling left and right you know so if you had VoIP and you had printers and you had management um, the management's already there but uh, you know the more VLANs you add the more you'll see over here and so sometimes you may have a port that might be um, part of maybe 10 different VLANs or 20 different VLANs and uh, it'll be tagged on on maybe all of your VLANs depending on how the network is uh, needing to be set up so we'll cancel that Go back to the main menu um, let's see uh, if you go into the port and trunk settings this is where you can do things like turn flow control on and off you can start assigning ports to trunks uh, and for those of you that don't know what a trunk is a trunk uh, is uh, the ability to take ports and sort of merge them together to create one bigger pipe basically so you see that all these ports are at they're running at gigabit speeds okay so let's say we have two switches connected um, and they're both gigabit switches and they're both 24 or 48 port gigabit switches and we want to connect two switches together but we want to connect them faster than one gig you know we're saying this switch is handling a lot of traffic and this switch is handling a lot of traffic and the traffic needs to start passing back and forth between the two switches how do we make a faster connection than just one gigabit that's not really the fastest in the world and we might need a two gig or four gig or six gig connection between the two switches would really improve things right so what you do is let's say um, that on this switch ports 10, 11, 12, and 13. We have, we have uh, network cables running from ports 10, 11, 12, and 13 all the way across the building to another switch on four ports uh, on the other side of the building. Uh, what we would do is say, okay, we want to take the four cables that we have connecting these two switches. And uh, which, by the way, you can't connect those cables until you create a trunk or you'll create a loopback and basically take the whole network down. So don't plug in, you know, more than one cable between two switches until you get trunking set up and enabled. So um, you can connect one between the two, that's fine, but don't do more than one until you get trunking enabled. So what you would do if you want to connect all four of those uh, cable or all four of those cables together and make a four gig trunk is you would say okay 10, 11, 12, and 13 are going to be members of trunk number one. Okay? And you see how HP they, they called this you know group up here at the top. Um, so basically by enabling trunk one on ports 10, 11, 12, and 13, we're basically taking the capacity of four gigs 
and allowing all of that to, to pass between the switches. And so what you have to do is whatever ports these four cables are connected to on the other switch is you have to go into the other switch and do the same thing. They do not have to be um, the same trunk number between the two different switches. I can do trunk one here and I can do trunk 10 on the other switch. It doesn't matter. They just need to be the same on um, whichever switch they're on. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So if I go here and say trunk two, well, then I just knocked this trunk down to a three gig. And if I change this to three, then I've just knocked it down to a two gig because it's only going to look uh, at the same group here. And so if you want to disable, you just scroll all the way through until you get to the end and you see it goes away. So if I left it like this, ports 10 and 11 would be what's also considered sometimes a bonded connection. And uh, it's basically these two ports coming together and creating a two gig connection. Okay, that's what a trunk is, that's what a bond is. All right, so we'll go ahead and just turn that off. There's no sense in leaving that like that. Okay, so we've taken the trunks out. Um, actually, one thing that I will do is go ahead and make these members of a trunk. And I'll show you how a trunk that turns into a single port can also be assigned VLANs. Okay? So if I save this and then go back to the VLAN menu, VLAN port assignment, you'll see that I'm at the top of the list here. You know, I didn't scroll down, but ports one, two, three, and four are missing. They're not in the list. So it's kind of like, what's what's going on? Why can't I get to those? I want to, you know, I want to assign one, two, three, and four to the management uh, or VoIP or whatever. Well, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see that you have trunk one on the bottom here, okay? So all of those ports that are a member of trunk one are assigned their VLANs on this one line. Okay, so that's how that works. Um, if I had, you know, other ports that were in, that were part of a different group, like trunk two, three, four, those would also show up here and you just would configure them how you need them to be configured. So we could say actually trunk one only needs to pass, you know, management traffic. Let's say we have a lot of management traffic and we need a four gig trunk between, between the two switches. Um, and so we, we would come in here and do this. And now the only traffic that the trunk would carry would be management traffic that's, that's untagged. Okay, so we could come and save that. And I've lost the connection. I don't know why. That's very interesting. <laughs> so anyway, that is how the um, the management uh, is is actually handled from the CLI. Now there is a web interface. I don't really prefer the web interface, especially on these older devices. They they use a lot of Java and they use a lot of other basically crap that's really hard to get into once once those interfaces cease to be updated. Um, you have to do some pretty crazy things. You know, Chrome doesn't support um, any um, uh, any Java at all anymore, as far as I know. You used to be able to manually like force it to work and then they, they strip that out altogether. So you kind of have to go to something old, like an old, old version of Firefox and you have to get an old, old version of Java and it's it's just a it's kind of a nightmare. So the web interface, there's really no point uh, even getting in, quite honestly, because the CLI does everything you need it to do. So um, anyway, that's how you connect to the CLI of an HP switch. And there's a little bit about VLANs there, and that's why these things they're great for your house and they're great for home and maybe even small business. You know, if you're not running any VLANs, then, uh, you know, these, these would work okay. 
But uh, as far as anything with QoS or VLANs or, or something that needs to be up and running all the time and needs redundant power supplies, um, you know, real switches are the way to go. Please, please, please do not get, you know, five or ten of these and, and use little short patch cables and, and link a whole bunch of them together to create, you know, a, a 20, 25 port switch. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Just, just leave these alone, okay? If you're getting to that point, it's time to ditch these and spend the real money on what your company that you're working for, or that you have a contract with, or that you're consulting, spend the money on what they really need. You'll be a lot happier. They'll be a lot happier.